lot of questions after last week's Iron Melt. Let's talk about those. Last week I attempted to melt iron and it worked. Made some ingots and I, I had tons of questions, way more than I anticipated. So uh, a lot of them were duplicates so I'm going to try to address a bunch of those uh, as quickly as I can and then we're going to test this ingot which a lot of people wanted to see. We're going to uh, break it apart and see if there's candy inside. Uh, but to keep this ramble from going on too long, I actually made a list. See? I'm prepared. Question the first. Uh, people want to see the ingot tray. Here it is. Nothing all that special. I just I bought a big piece of angle. This is one and a quarter by one and a quarter eighth inch, I think. Uh, it's stupidly, I got galvanized and I tried cleaning some of it off, but I'm kind of lazy, so I didn't get all of it. Then I just cut it up into sections and uh, welded it together. So pretty standard, so I didn't make a video on it. Uh, one important thing, notice how this makes a V? Well that kind of acts like draft so the ingots fall out. But I, I actually cut these edges also with kind of an angle. So there's draft on that too. Not a lot, maybe 10 degrees. So it worked pretty well. The ingots just fell right out. And uh, it looks it looks pretty gross. I used a mix of TIG welding across here. I was practicing and MIG welding under here when I decided I sucked too much at TIG welding and I just wanted it to work. Also, fun fact, I made the, the ba base here suspended up just a little bit. So when this thing is sitting on the ground, there's space underneath. So there's no hot part of whatever with molten metal touching the concrete. So a little bit of air. So there, ingot tray. Next up, the furnace. Barely even worth looking at. It it looks fine. You know, I, I just recently coated this again with Satanite and there is no damage. You know, there's some some specks of crap in there and, and the plinth block is still broken and there's still crap on it. And I got some more scale, some like metal scale from the lid, the steel lid. Remember the steel thing wraps around to hold all the bricks in? And uh, apparently it's getting pretty hot because there's some scale. But it's, it's overall it it works pretty good, you know. I, I actually modeled this furnace after a iron melting furnace I saw on Alloy Avenue, the forum. And except except I didn't, I uh, don't have like heavy refractory cement inside, so this is far less thermal mass, so it heats up really quickly. But these bricks were the same bricks, same temperature rating, and the satanite over the top is actually a higher temperature rating than the refractory cement they use. So I figure. If all the ratings are the same or higher as an iron melting furnace, but I only melt copper, then it should last forever. And that's kind of worked, uh, but you know, if I melt iron, then I'm going to have another issue. But I did model it to, uh, to sort of the same temperature specs-ish. One could say I was planning ahead, but I really didn't plan on melting iron, but I might, you know, it's good to have an option. The crucible, however, did not fare so well. See, it's highly, highly vitrified, all glassy and gross. And yeah, the chaos, it looked 95% this bad before I started. This is the first crucible I ever bought. And I half expected this was going to kill it because uh, SW Dweeb and Big Stack, the Australian, tried melting iron. Uh, I say tried, they melted iron, but they also melted their crucibles. So I was planning on this being the final use of this crucible. And I think I'm going to retire it after this because I no longer feel safe using it. One cool thing that you can't see, it's very bottom heavy much heavier than it than it was originally. It's not just because there's some metal in the bottom, because there's no more metal in the bottom than there was before. But I think all of the, the silica part of the clay, the silica component, melted and has kind of flowed from the top down into the bottom. So there's a lot more of this glassy silica content. And uh, yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty cool. Probably not gonna use this anymore. But this is not the correct kind of crucible for iron anyway. There are special kinds of crucibles for the extra heat in iron uh, and, and special sand. But iron sand, iron casting sand, tends to have like coal dust in it and some other junk. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that later. But this is not the right crucible and it's pretty much dead now. Ew. Looks like I spilled jelly on it or something. Okay, next up, here is one of the ingots. <clears throat> I'm going to clamp it here in this vise and whack it with a hammer. I'm going to whack it here because this makes kind of a V cross section and this is the, the thinnest part, the, the narrowest part. So that's going to focus a lot of the stress right here and cast iron 
as opposed to like steel. Cast iron is not good in tension. So if you whack it here, you're exhibiting tension force on this side, compressive force on this side, and cast iron does not like tension. It breaks very easily. It's why it's kind of brittle and why you see uh, cast iron used some cases and forged steel used other cases. It has to do with the, uh, I think it's the carbon, the carbon or the silicon in it. One of those forms crystals and those cause like uh, micro stress points and I'm not a metallurgist, but it's just something I read on, on the Googles, which means it's got to be true, right? Should I use the aluminum bronze hammer? Yeah, let's use the aluminum bronze hammer. I missed. Wow, this stuff's pretty tough. Ah, got it. All right, let's see what we can see. Noticing a couple things that remember the bronze I said this had a little bit of contamination from the unclean crucible so there's a little bit of uh, bronze here a fleck on the surface no bronze running through the inside so that's good I'm right it was all on the edge and it's also a uniform gray color uh, I, I got a picture from SW Dweeb of, of him cutting open the thing that he cast and broke and he had some some gray and he had some white and I really don't see any of that, although if you ask me it looks a little darker gray kind of around the edges maybe, although that might just be how it broke. It's not broke totally flat, there's kind of like a cup. Yeah, it's, it's kind of replicated on both sides of the break, but not bad, pretty uniform looking. I mean if you ask me, I mean, you, you tell me, you're seeing it. Someone in the comments was a professional metallurgist, what do you think? Lucky Jen, if you're watching, what do you think? Is that, is that good? I, I have no idea. All right, there we go. I hit it with a 120 grit uh, flap disc. Then I tried hitting it with some sandpaper, some some higher grit sandpaper, but I don't think it really helped. So there, it, it looks. I don't know. I think it looks pretty good. I don't see any cracks or any inclusions. There's a little bit. Don't know how well it'll show up, but there's a couple of little air pockets. They would have been right at the top, within the top millimeter or so. But other than that, I think it looks half decent. Some of you people out there are going to be way more knowledgeable than me on this cast iron thing. This was just an experiment. So uh, yeah, you let me know. You let me know what you think. So I hope that answered your questions. Uh, if not, leave more questions and I'll try to answer them in the comments. And uh, tomorrow I probably will be streaming, so look out for that. Probably in the afternoon, maybe 2-ish central time. I'm central time, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all your questions and your interest in the cast iron. I'll definitely be doing stuff with cast iron because this is pretty cool, but i got to get a little more set up first. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow, hopefully.